After years of shipping only cards and U.2 based transcoders that users had to install in a server, now NetInt is shipping a complete server. Drum roll, please. The NetInt video transcoding server. Jan Ozer tested the performance for both interactive applications and ABR streaming and has some hot of the press results to share. Jan, why is the big news? We created the server to serve two different markets. Number one, there were a bunch of users who were buying individual cards and then running into minor configuration problems when they tried to install them. So it just made sense to offer a server-based product where they could get 10 cards in a system that was already installed and optimized for those. And we also found a dealer channel that was interested in buying the products, adding their software, and then selling those to, to end user customers. So those are the two channels that we're targeting. And both of them, um, you know, both of them get the benefit of, of, as you say, great performance for both interactive productions and ABR streaming. What's in the server? So in the server are 10 uh, NetEnt T408 transcoders which are YouTube based and they can input and output both H.264 and HEVC. And it comes in three models with different uh, AMD CPUs, one eight core, one thirty-two core and one sixty-four core. Prices start at seven and I think go up to around $12,000. Why are we selling three models of transcoding server? So why three models? The, um, the thing to know about the T408 is that while it performs all transcoding on board, so as I said, H.264 and HTBC in and out, it does scaling and overlay using the host CPU. So there's some applications that, you know, ABR streaming a 4K video where you're scaling down in your encoding ladders, you may want to get a 64 core CPU to make sure you have enough power to produce, you know, the seven or eight streams that we saw the unit could produce. On the other hand, if you're doing you know, 1080p in, 1080p out, and, and I think you can, we'll look at the number of streams you can get in a few seconds, then really you can get away with an eight, you know, a, an eight core model. How does a user or developer talk to the server and cards inside? So it's the same paradigm for one card or for the complete server. You can communicate or, or direct the card's operation via FFmpeg, GStreamer, or a low level uh, SDK. And all, you know, all those approaches include load balancing of the card, so you don't have to worry about that. You send the jobs in using one of the three approaches that I, uh, that I mentioned, and the software layer above the card allocates the jobs to the open decoders and encoders and processes the work automatically. Works really well. Why Supermicro? So Supermicro is, you know, is a very good manufacturer for us for, for three reasons. Number one, obviously very high quality, um, very high quality standards that they adhere to. Number two, it's a very green company. And one of the primary benefits of ASICs in general and the NetNT T4 rate in particular, I mean, it's seven watts of operation. So we needed a server that was very green in focus, very low power, and Supermicro was able to provide that. And the third one is they really sharpened their pencil to get us to a price point that I think will be you know, groundbreaking for a lot of potential users. I mean, $7,000 for 150 output streams, you, you, really can't, you really can't match that. What use cases did you test for? So we looked at two different use cases. Uh, the first one, you know, single stream in, single stream out. And there we looked at both, you know, same resolution in, same re resolution out. And we also looked at, you know, one resolution in scaling to a lower resolution than that resolution out. And we did that, of course, because some producers uh, produce that way, right? They make it a 4K stream in and a 1080p out, but also because that, you know, that put a load on the CPU and we wanted to see how the CPU reacted. And we tested the 32 core model, just, just for reference. Um, the other use case, of course, is ABR streaming, where we tested a, a five rung H.264 1080p encoding ladder, uh, a four rung HEVC 1080p encoding ladder, and a six rung 4K HEVC encoding ladder. Any high level results to share? Sure. I mean, it, it's always going to be easier to look at the tables in the article itself, but we looked at three cases, as I, as I said a moment ago, and this is pure transcoding. And it starts at 4K in and out. And we measure for codec in, codec out. So it's AVC in, AVC out, AVC in, HEVC out. And we're seeing at 4K, we're seeing 20 instances a piece using FFmpeg. And that includes both normal operation and low delay 
uh, low latency. And then for 1080p 30 in and out, we see up to 70 or 80 outputs, depending upon the codec combination. And then at 720p, we see up to 170 outputs, depending upon codec in, codec out, and then the software program that's driving, driving the units. Uh, so that's pure transcoding. Um, obviously, these tables are in the article, so um, I'm, I'm kind of rushing through them. The transcoding with scaling, obviously, the numbers are lower. Um, here we see the CPU utilization is starting to creep up a bit. In the first case that we talked about, you know, we're seeing CPU utilization even at 150 streams at around the five or six percent level, and that's at the 32 core um, CPU. And that's why I said we offer an eight core CPU because that might be fine for this type of operation. And then transcoding with scaling, CPU usage is creeping up a bit. You know, we're, we're 34, 35% down here with FFmpeg in low delay mode. GStreamer is a bit more efficient than we saw with FFmpeg, but the number of streams is, is really fantastic. You know, 4K in, 1080p out, or 1080p out, we're seeing, you know, 20 instances across the board. Uh, 1080p 30 in, 720p 30 out, we're seeing 80 across the board there as well in both normal latency and, uh, and low, low latency. And then the final mode we looked at, Again, this is all in, in the article. We looked at three different encoding ladders. This is H.264 out, five rung encoding ladder. And we see with FFmpeg, we get 30 full encoding ladders out from this uh, server. Low delay really drops out with FFmpeg, but we see that we're at 30 for both um, low delay and normal latency in GStreamer. And CPU utilization, again, is very efficient here. It's only around you know, it's, it's 9% for low delay with GStreamer. The second scenario was H. or HEDC, a four rung encoding ladders. And with FFmpeg, we got 26 dropping to 14 with, uh, with low delay, but we got 28 and 28 with GStreamer in both normal latency and low delay modes. So that's 28 four rung HEDC encoding ladders from a single server. And then the 4K use case is HEVC. Obviously, you're going to use HEVC for, for, for almost all your 4K output streams. And with FFmpeg, we saw three encoding ladders out, and that dropped to less than, um, less than one. And all these numbers are full frame rate outputs. Should have explained that from the start. But with GStreamer in both normal and low delay mode, we saw seven 4K HEVC encoding ladders out from this unit. And again, we see CPU utilization is very low in, in both of the GStreamer cases. How will this compare to software-based encoding? You know, it's going to vary by codec. We didn't, we didn't really test on this unit. We kind of ran out of time with NAB coming up. But typically, you're going to see ASIC-based transcoding is going to be between 5x and 10x more efficient than software-based encoding. And particularly with HEVC, you're going to see a significant uh, multiple using uh, ASIC based as opposed to CPU based. I noticed that HEVC and H.264 outputs were about the same. Isn't that unusual? Anybody coming into the ASIC world would look at those numbers and think that can't be true. And certainly that was true with me. Um, but, but the fact is with ASIC based transcoding, it's hardware. So you get the same number of outputs, whether it's HEVC or H.264. What does this mean for publishers distributing H.264 now, but considering HEVC? So it pretty much means a seamless upgrade from H.264 to HEVC. And that's very different from the software store. If you're doing CPU-based transcoding and you decide to go to HEVC, you're going to have to buy five times the amount of infrastructure to produce the same number of streams. With, with ASICs, with the T4 or 8 and the server, basically you change a couple of switches in the script and, and you're outputting HEVC, not H.264, and the system can handle the same output numbers as we saw in the three tables that we looked at. I know you just love testing, but why test with FFmpeg and GStreamer? You know, if it was up to me, I would have just tested only with FFmpeg, but we found not only with the server, but also with some other use cases we were running into, was that when operations got really complex, FFmpeg got bogged down. And we felt like FFmpeg wasn't, you know, wasn't uh, showing the true, true potential of our hardware. So when we switched to GStreamer, and you saw the results with uh, particularly the 4K encoding ladder, with FFmpeg, we couldn't produce one 4K low, low delay output. 
And with GStreamer, we had seven. So, you know, we're trying to get smarter on GStreamer. Obviously, our techs know it. I have, you know, I've got a couple of books out on FFmpeg. I'm going to have to get smart on GStreamer myself. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, if you're really doing complex operations, you're going to benefit from GStreamer. And we wanted to show that in our tests. And that's why we tested with both. What about power consumption? What have you discovered? We tested power consumption in each use case, and we measured the instance that drew the most CPU power. So when we were pure transcoding, we drew the most CPU at 150 outputs for HEBC to HEBC, and the watts consumption was 322 watts for a watts per output of around 2.1. Scaling from uh, 1080p to 720p, HDBC to ABC, we drew only 300 watts. Um, we had 90 outputs, and that was around 3.4 watts per output. And then the five rung ABC encoding ladder and low delay mode, uh, we had 30 full ladder outputs, 324 watts output for a uh, watts per output of around 10.8 watts. And I think if you compare these to software or even GPU, you'll find that they're you know, for software, it would be at least 10 times higher. For GPU, it's, you know, two or three times higher. Latency is a new hot topic. So what about latency? You know, we listed the latency findings for each use case again. And, you know, at 30 frames per second, you've got 33 milliseconds per frame. And we saw that in, in virtually every use case that we tested, latency was well under one frame. Okay, cool new product. What's the elevator pitch? You know, the elevator pitch is what you see for ASICs in general, very low cost per stream, very low power per stream, ultra low latency. And then the server itself is a drop-in replacement for any existing encoder, whether it's software or GPU-based hardware. Okay, sold. How can I buy one? Every application is unique, and we welcome you to talk to our sales representatives who are engineers themselves in almost every case. Um, of course, if, you're, if you know what you want, You've already used the server, too. You can buy them off our website directly.